Apple's WWDC 2020 confirmed what has been rumored for so long and being prophesized for almost a decade now. Apple will switch to its own ARM-based A-series processor for its Mac lineup of devices. Apple already makes its iPhone and iPads with their own in-house processor, but for the MacBooks and iMacs, they have been heavily dependent on Intel, which resulted in a bit of turmoil in the past. To avoid that in the future, there is no other way for Apple but to make that switch. But many have been doubtful if Apple would be able to do so where Microsoft has failed. Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome to another TechScribe video. In our today's video, we will explore why Apple has an excellent chance to pull off what Microsoft couldn't. Apple's in-house ARM processors for MacBook is called Apple Silicon, and after watching Apple's WWDC 2020 keynote, I was very excited about their vision. While many are still doubtful, I think Apple has a real chance of making a viable product lineup with Apple Silicon. Let me explain why is that. Apple went all in with their Apple Silicon project. They have announced that their entire Mac lineup, from the smallest Mac Mini to MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, iMac and Mac Pro will transition away from Intel to Apple Silicon. There are no ifs and whens. It's decided and Apple is going to make that transition into reality over the course of the next two years. In Microsoft's case, there was very little commitment to it. It was almost like, hey, we have got an ARM chip that can run Windows and if you're interested, you can get it. Whereas Apple is like, we're going to transition away from Intel and you have two years to make the necessary optimization. So if a third-party app developer wants their apps to work well on Macs with Apple Silicon, they have no way but to start optimizing if they don't want their apps to turn shit. With Windows, there was no specific deadline, so the developers really didn't want to make that extra effort as they were doubtful about the future of ARM-powered Windows. Compared to Windows developers, Apple has more loyal developers and consumer base, which gave them the confidence to kind of push those developers. But Microsoft can't really go all in like the way Apple went, and we will talk about the reason behind it later. Anyways, as for why Apple will succeed, the second reason would be commitment. They have shown incredible commitment to the project by making sure all of its existing apps work on the new platform natively from day one. Where Microsoft was unable to do that, the new Edge browser which they have built from scratch was not available natively on its ARM-based devices for several months. Apple also made sure their most important third-party developers poured over their apps from day one, like the Microsoft Office Suite and Adobe Creative Cloud apps work on the new ARM chips natively, whereas Microsoft couldn't make that happen even after being three years ahead of Apple. The new Mac OS Big Sur will also help a great deal in making that transition swift and fast. The Xcode 12 will allow the developers to build apps that will run natively on both Apple Silicon and Intel Silicon. There is also Rosetta 2, an emulator built into macOS Big Sur, which will enable our Macs to run older Intel apps. Let's not get into too much into details, just know this, it will help developers as they don't need to make any change to their old apps. So the macOS Big Sur, you will be able to use most of the apps that have been made for Intel-based processors from day one, and hopefully within two years, most app developers will make their software available for the ARM-based Mac platform as well, if they still want their app to run on the new Macs. If you look at these two companies, then it would be more apparent why Apple was able to make that strong standpoint and Microsoft couldn't. Microsoft has a lot of enterprise customers who have a lot of legacy software which they aren't willing to change as it would require them to spend more resources on it. And Microsoft can't really push those partners to do so. Microsoft as a company is more focused with their enterprise consumers. To bring those enterprise consumers on board, they need to provide them with a sure thing, which Microsoft can't as they're not the original chip manufacturer. Microsoft has to ask Qualcomm to make the chips for them. Then they would have to ask OEM partners like HP, Dell, Lenovo and such to put those chips into their devices. Then they have to ask the third-party developers to make their apps available for that platform, which is a lot of work and, and if those steps are not done properly, consumers will be left with devices with super performance. As a result, they won't buy those devices anymore. And if the consumers don't buy those devices, OEMs will lose interest on that platform. If there are no substantial number of users on the platform, the app developer won't go through the process of changing their apps. 
So it's a vicious cycle that Microsoft has absolutely no control over and eventually doomed to fail. Whereas Apple will be making its own chips and manufacture its own devices with their own software. So they have absolute control over what they make. As a result, they have complete leverage over those third party developers. So when you take the differences in both companies and their approaches into accounts, I think it becomes pretty clear that Apple is way more likely to pull something like this off. But all of this is only one way of seeing this. There are other things to consider like the computing power and graphics performance. It is rumored that the first device to receive ARM treatment is going to be either a 13-inch MacBook device or a 24-inch iMac. Whichever device receives that treatment is going to be announced either at the end of this year or earlier next year. As for the processor, there is no concrete evidence which will be chosen. Apple released a developer kit on the WWDC 2020 with A12Z Bionic chip. But I'm almost sure that the hardware was put out by Apple as something quick and inexpensive for developers to get on board to this whole transition process. The real hardware will be something entirely different and would have more recent hardware like the A14 chips that would be unveiled with the iPhone 12 series phones. Whichever chips used, it should have the graphical prowess that should at least match the performance of the device that we already have. Apple A-series processors offer impressive performance for the iPhones and iPads, but compared to the GPUs provided by AMD and Nvidia, they have no comparison. Although the A12Z chip has an 8-core GPU which enables better and faster 4K video editing, rendering and augmented reality in iPad. It also features tuned performance controllers and a better thermal architecture which would allow for higher clock speed. Similar things could be done for the new Mac hardware as well. We might see an A14 X, Y or Z on the rumored MacBook or iMac device and with active cooling inside the Macs, the chips would be able to achieve much better graphical performance compared to what they are actually capable of. So there goes everything about the Apple Silicon. If you liked the video then don't forget to hit like and share with your friends. Comment below and let us know if you're excited about the Macs running on Apple Silicon. If you loved the video then subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified of our future videos.